let me start this video with a story. Let's imagine a worse situation for a company. A professional hacker got access to a banking network. He got access to all the data. He then downloaded all the files to his own command and control center server. And finally, he sells all the data on the dark web. Now let's talk about a good situation for the same company. The same hacker delivers the malware inside the banking network using a phishing technique. And now he is at the last stage of his hacking. Malware tries to establish the connection but get failed again and again and again. Mission is failed for the hacker. This was possible because there was someone who detected the malware and destroyed the malicious connection at the right time. That guy was SOC Analyst. SOC Analyst works in the security operations center. They are forced to respond any kind of cyber threats. Watch this video till the end because I'm going to talk about 10 must have skills for SOC Analyst. And if you are new to this channel, please subscribe as this will help us grow. Each skill that I'm going to talk about will have two components. First, the concept and second, tools or the actions. Number one, cybersecurity fundamentals. This is the most important skill, not just for SOC analysis, but in fact for any cybersecurity rules. Let's talk about the concept you should know about. CIA trial, which consists of confidentiality, integrity, availability concepts of information security, OSI model, TCP IP and its packet header. You should also know about some important protocols such as HTTP or HTTPS. Learn about HTTP methods and response code. Next, DNS. Learn about how DNS works and its different records. Next, FTP. Learn about active FTP and passive FTP. There are some more protocols you should know about. Learn about cryptography. Learn about encryption, hashing, or public key infrastructure. Learn about types of cyber attacks, such as malware, denial of service attacks, web-based attacks, phishing attacks, and many more. Let's talk about some tools you can use to practice or to learn about cybersecurity fundamentals. The most simplest thing you can do is open your command prompt and try using some commands such as ipconfig, ping, you can use the trust route, you can use the netstat and some more commands. You should also check out MX Toolbox. This will help you to understand how DNS works and some more features. Number two, operating systems. You should be comfortable with two most popular operating systems, not Mac OS. I'm talking about Windows and Linux. Let's talk about the concepts. Learn about the directories, network settings, file editor, file systems. Let's talk about some tools. You can start with VirtualBox and create virtual machines and then you can actually change some of the parameters such as network setting from bridge mode to host only mode. Next, you can use the Kali Linux. You can play with file permission wherein you can try changing the file permission by using CH mode. Try changing the network settings from DSTP to static or maybe to any other IP address. Try getting hands-on with some file editors such as Nano, gedit or vi editor number three is network security it is very important to understand how parameter security and first line of defense really works let's talk about the concepts firewalls learn about firewalls such as stateful firewalls web application firewalls and next gen firewalls learn about ids that's intrusion detection system ids monitors the network traffic for suspicious activity and alert the admin ips that's intrusion prevention system like IDS, it also monitors the traffic, but it also takes the preventive action against the suspicious activity. Let's talk about the tools. First, commercial firewalls. These are Checkpoint, Cisco ASA, Palo Alto, Fortinet. Out of this, you can directly get the trial license of the Checkpoint firewall from their official website. Next, open source firewall. You can download PFSense software and deploy in your virtual environment. You should try Security Onion. It has built-in IDS and IPS tools such as Suricata and Zeek. You should also try Snot. It's a network IDS. Number four is vulnerability management. Vulnerability management is the process of identifying, evaluating, treating, and reporting security vulnerabilities. Let's talk about the concepts. You need to perform vulnerability scanning. This involves scanning infrastructure that has routers, switches, servers, firewalls, web application, and many more. Next, you need to know about vulnerability assessment. Vulnerability scanner will provide you risk ratings such as CVSS score. You need to perform a risk assessment based on, is this vulnerability a false positive? Could someone directly exploit this vulnerability from the internet? 
how difficult is it to exploit this vulnerability? And some more questions. Prioritize and address the vulnerabilities. Based on the risk assessment, you need to decide the treatment, such as remediation, where you can ask the system admin to perform their full patch management. Next, mitigation. It can be kind of a workaround solution. Next, you have acceptance, where you take no action to fix the vulnerability. Don't worry, it is decided based on multiple factors. Finally, continuous vulnerability management, where you proactively perform the vulnerability management. Let's talk about the tools. First is Nmap. It's very popular, it's open source, and it's used for network scanning. Then you have OpenVAS or JVM. There are some commercial tools as well, such as Tenable, Coalesc, or rapid seller. All right, number five is incident response. Incident response is a process of managing cyber attacks to minimize the damage, minimize the recovery time, minimize the total cost, and finally control the damage to the brand reputation. Incident response enables the organization to prepare for known and unknown attacks, immediately identify the security incidents, and establishes the best practices to block intrusions before they cause damage. Let's talk about the concepts. As a SOC analyst, you should know about the incident response process. Number one, early detection. In this SIM platform alerts the incident response team. Step number two, analysis. Analysts review the alerts. They identify the indicator of compromise and then triage the threat. Number three, prioritization. SOC analysts need to understand the impact of the incident. Then they prioritize the incident based on what matters the most. And then finally, they manage resources. Step number four is notification. SOC analysts notify the appropriate people in the organization. Just a note here, in case of confirmed breach, organization need to intimate or inform to external parties as well, such as customers, business partners, regulators, law enforcement agencies, or public. To be very honest, the decision to inform the external parties is left to senior management. Number five is containment and forensics. SOC analysts check the infected machines and isolate them from the network. They usually collect the forensic data such as firewall logs, proxy logs, Wireshark capture, etc. Step number six is the recovery. In this step, SOC analysts basically eradicate the malware from the infected system. Next, they work on restoration part where they rebuild, restore from backup, and patch those systems to restore normal operations. This is also handled by system admin. Final step is incident review. I know the process was long, but this is very important. Next concept is incident response framework. There are multiple incident response frameworks, but two are very popular. Nest Incident Response Framework and SANS Incident Response Framework. The third concept you should know about is Incident Response Automation. In this, you should have a knowledge about incident response playbooks. These are important scripts that the team member or security solutions can follow. When an organization buys SOAR platform, these playbooks come along with it. You should also know about tools integration, such as Slack, Microsoft Teams, or service now. Next, you should you should know about threat intelligence. You should know about some popular frameworks such as Cyber Kill Chain or MITRE Attack Framework. You should know about TTP or IOC. You should also know about where to get threat intelligence fields. If you don't know about threat intelligence, let me give you a brief. Threat intelligence is basically an evidence-based data or information about a cyber attacks. Now, threat intelligence can be tactical, it can be operational, or it can be strategic. If you want a separate video on threat intelligence, do write me in the comment section. Let's talk about the tools and action you should take. Number one, Splunk Enterprise Security. It's a commercial SIM tool, but it also provides trial license. IBM Curator, it's a SIM tool, and you can also have community edition of it. Next, Elastic, it's a powerful SIM solution. MISP, it's a powerful open source intelligence gathering platform. Next, Wazoo, it's an open source security monitoring solution. You should definitely check this out. Next, Shuffle, it's an open source SOAR platform for security automation. Next, Ansible, it's an open source infrastructure as a code solution. It is also used for security automation. Number six is phishing analysis. Now, phishing is cyber threat that uses social engineering. Now the purpose is to trick individuals into providing sensitive data, such as your personal, very personal data. 
banking and credit card details, or maybe your darling one, two, three password. Just kidding. And yes, it's a job of SOC analysts to investigate any phishing attacks. But let's talk about the concepts. You should know about different types of phishing attacks, such as email phishing, spare phishing. It's similar to the email phishing attack, but it's more targeted. Next, whaling. It's a phishing attack aiming to senior executives. Next, smishing and wishing. Now, smishing involves criminals sending text messages, and wishing involves a telephonic conversation like this. Next is angular phishing. It's a social media based phishing attack and which is very popular now. Let's talk about other concepts. You should know about email header analysis, URL and IP reputation check and how to do who is domain lookup. Let's talk about some tools. First is virustotal.com. It's a very popular tool used for scanning files, URL, IP and domain lookup. Next tool is mailheader.org used for scanning email headers. Next tool is IBM X-Force for threat intelligence feeds. Next tool is Checkfish, and it's used for IP and URL lookup. It also provides plugin for Outlook. Skill number seven is malware analysis. The art of dissecting a malware and understanding how the malware works, what's the objective of the malware, and finally, how to eliminate the malware. It's called malware analysis. SOC analysts should have a basic knowledge of malware analysis as in some of the mature organization, there are some dedicated team for malware analysis. Let's talk about some concepts. To become a SOC analyst, you should know about types of malware. You should know about static malware analysis. You should also know about dynamic malware analysis. You should also know about different types of packets used to mask the malware. You should also know about different sandbox environment. Let's talk about some popular malware analysis tools. First is PE Studio. It pull out any suspicious artifacts. Next is Process Monitor. It records the live file system activity, such as process creation and registry change. Next is ProcDoc. It allows you to visualize the data from Process Monitor tool. Next is Process Hacker. This is a simple tool and it also helps you to detect a newly created malware process. Next is IDA Pro. It's a commercial solution, but it is also a powerful debugger. Next is Wireshark. It's very, very, very popular. It captures and analyzes the network traffic. Next is AnyRun. It's a cloud-based sandbox solution. Number eight is digital forensics. In the mature organization, digital forensics and incident response is managed by a single team called DFIR team. As a part of digital forensic activity, you will be involved in retrieving protected or encrypted data, analyzing network breaches, and documenting case findings. Let's talk about some important concepts you should know. Collecting and analyzing network evidences, such as firewall logs, proxy logs, NetFlow, TCP dump packet captures, Wireshark packet captures, Next is acquiring and analyzing host-based evidences. Acquiring volatile and non-volatile memory or maybe system storage. Malware analysis. Yes, you heard me right. Malware analysis is a part of digital forensics. Let's talk about some important tools you should get hands-on with. The first one is Autopsy. This is very powerful digital forensic platform. Next is FTK Manager. It is used for local acquisitions. Next is Wireshark. Yes, it is very popular even in the digital forensics. Next is Encase. It's a very, very popular tool, but it's not free. Encase is also popular among the government agencies. Next is Volatility, a memory analysis tool used to extract the data from RAM. Next tool is Registry Viewer, a tool used to analyze the Windows registry. Next tool is Hashcap, a tool used to calculate the file hashes. All right, skill number nine is Security Frameworks and Compliances. As a security analyst, you need to know about security frameworks and compliances. It is useful while creating SIM rules, while coordinating with security management, also while coordinating with the external auditors. Let's talk about some important concepts you should know about. You should know about PCI DSS compliance. It is applicable for the companies or the organization who either process or store credit card information or in a nutshell, any financial services company. HIPAA compliance, applicable for US healthcare organizations. You should know about GDPR. It is applicable for the organization serving customers in European countries. SOX compliance. It is applicable for US publicly traded companies. ISO 27001. It is an international standard for information security. NEST CSF. 
It is a very, very popular framework. It has a set of guidelines to mitigate cyber threats. Let's talk about tools and actions. I have done many security audits. To help you better, I'm sharing you a link of these documents. You can find the links in the description below. Number 10 is workplace skills. This is the most powerful skill that can make you unique in the crowd. Let's talk about the concepts you need to know about. Number one, communication. As a security analyst, you may need to communicate technical concepts to individuals without a technical background, such as with executives or with legal teams. Number two is teamwork. You may need to collaborate with the other teams, such as legal, IT, public relations, or maybe you need to share your findings with the other organization or maybe the greater cybersecurity community. Number three is critical thinking. Working in cybersecurity sometimes means making high stake decisions about your organization's security. So critical thinking is very, very important. Let's talk about tools and actions. To be very honest, I can't find any specific tools for this, but I have a solution. I'll share you some important links and free courses to improve your workplace skills. You can find the link in the description below. Let's summarize. So these are the 10 must have skills for SOC analyst job. Do let me know how did you like the video. If you have any query, write me in the comment section. I'll try my best to answer each one of you. If you are interested to become malware analyst, you can watch this video. If you want to know about security analysis, you can watch this video.